Okay, we were having sound issues, so we're going to start over and hope that this is better. Um, so if I lost you, I'm sorry, please come back. And for those of you I didn't lose, welcome back quickly. Um, for those of you who have never watched a body mapping video before, my name is Laurel Don Houston. I am the creator of body mapping and the founder of Reflections Inside and Out. I'm going to wait just a second and let me know. Okay, they're saying sound is better. Beautiful. Okay, and thank you for coming back. That's so much, per that's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, good. Then we are going to talk about hands. So for those of you that watched the last one and then came back, sorry, you get to hear this all again. Um, so for a review, we're gonna talk about fingers because last week we talked about hands and your right hand is about uh, your masculine and your future. And your left hand is about your feminine and your past. And together, when you do things together, you're being very, very present, especially in body language. Um, if you tend to only talk with your right hand, um, you're projecting or you're more in masculine energy and you actually tend to talk with more of a push because masculine energy is push energy. And your left hand is feminine energy and feminine energy is more of a pull energy or you're talking about your past. So uh, masculine and feminine energy is not necessarily male and female. It is more, are you in a nurturing energy or are you in a protection energy? Um, and we show this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot with our hands. And so if you look at your hands and at your fingers, you will actually see for some people, you don't really notice a lot of different. Like when you measure, your hands are the same size. One's not bigger or smaller than the other. One may be stronger than the other, um, and that is just use. Uh, for years, I was a cosmetologist, and so I, you know, I used shears. So I have a very large, do you see that muscle right there? <laughs> that is from cutting hair. Um, not everyone, and my, my left thumb doesn't have that. So you can actually see a noticeable difference. So I'm not necessarily talking about differences like that. Your right hand, if you're writing, um, and that's your dominant hand is going to be stronger. What I'm talking about is, is there one hand that the knuckles stand out more? Um, is there one hand that tends to have drier skin? Um, is there one hand that you're always chewing on or sucking on or pulling on? Um, those are the reasons why I'm telling you right hand is masculine and future and left hand is feminine and past. Okay, and Jackie said, what does the web skin in between the index and the ring finger miss? I'll get there. Hold on. <laughs> so with, I'm going to grab my book really quick because I took my notes in here and I want to make sure I get them all. So when we are talking about fingers, each individual finger actually means something on its own. Um, but then, as Jackie asked, in between each finger has a meaning as well as the fingernails and the knuckles and i should have grabbed this beforehand so there it is right here okay so your hand as a whole quick review from last week um is about creation and connection so projects that kind of stuff fingernails are about protection um, and so for a lot of people, if in body language, they're constantly chewing apart their fingernails, um, they are feeling unprotected or other side of the coin. Um, they have people that are overprotective and they're actually trying to destroy those that are protecting them because they feel trapped by them, not protected by them. And so for some little kids, um, that little, little kids, if they have very controlling parents or very rigid, rigid schedules, um, they will... They'll chew on their protection, and it is actually a sign that they're wanting freedom. They're wanting to be able to do or play more. Um, oh, that was the other thing. A lot of people asked if I would do a video just on hands, body language, and I will do that as a separate. Um, it won't be a Monday mapping. I'll just pre-record it and put it on here for those of you to use that are in this group. Um, okay, I'm going to start with your thumb because the thumb is the one that the most people interact with. Um, your thumb is, it's actually two things. So it's willpower and it's your ancestry. So thumbs, genetically, you can either have a straight thumb 
meaning it just goes straight up and down, or you have a hitchhiker's thumb. So if you have a straight thumb, no matter how hard you try, your thumb won't do that. It won't point backwards, okay? People can have one of each. People can have one that's like super hitchhiker and one that's just kind of kind of hitchhiker. People can have both straight thumbs. Um, so that's why I'm talking about the masculine and the feminine because the farther back your thumb curves, the more of a connection you, the more strength you gain from having a connection or a knowledge of your past, where you came from. So if someone has like really, really major um, hitchhiker thumbs versus they have a straight up and down thumb, these people really care about their relationships here and now. Um, people that have hitchhiker thumbs, the more they know about where they came from, the easier it is to feel like they have purpose and power. Um, one of my mentors, Julie May, actually teaches that one of the best ways to instill empowerment and connection in families is to tell stories about past experiences, about ancestry, about family history. When people know where they came from, it builds an inner strength, even if they don't like where they came from. When people know where they came from, we actually feel stronger and more connected. And some people use that knowledge of their past to build up because they say, look at where I came from and I can just go higher from here. Or they say, look at where I came from and I'm never going back there. And other people say, look at where I came from and that's the best that I can get. So that uh, mental attitude, that mindset is actually going to show up in how you treat your thumbs. Okay, if you have a strong connection to your past and you have a very, very curved hitchhiker thumb, you will not do, I mean, your thumbs are just there. <laughs> if you have a really, really curved hitchhiker thumb and you don't know about your past and you don't know where you came from, you're going to fidget and play with and um, kind of actually tear at the skin a little bit around your thumb um, because you're trying to figure out your connections and... And so you pick the fleshy part because that's where connection is, not your protection. Now, if you feel like you need protection from where you came from, that's when you're going to do stuff to your thumb, uh, to your thumbnail. Now, the number one question that I get asked about thumbs is thumb sucking. So thumbs also mean willpower and sucking is a soothing mechanism. It's actually a natural instinct. You don't have to be taught how to suck. Um, so infants that have a full gestation, they're not born early, it is a natural instinct with them to know how to suck. And it's a soothing mechanism. And so this is why you don't usually see an adult suck their thumb. Um, but if it was socially acceptable, you would. You'd see a lot of adults sucking their thumb. Instead, they eat so kids that used to be thumb suckers that have not found a new self-soothing mechanism are actually more prone to have um, food or chemical addictions, meaning that they're going to, um, they're going to do something that engages their mouth. So they're going to be a smoker because it engages their mouth, or they're going to just eat to numb um, because it engages their mouth. So before you start freaking out, just because your kid is a thumb sucker doesn't mean they're going to be an addict when they're older. It means you need to teach them coping skills. It means you need to teach them how to um, understand their emotions and give them permission to fill. So thumb sucking as an actual act is not positive or negative. People have put negative connotations on it because it does mess with, because sometimes people will suck and they'll push. So it messes with your jaw and your breathing and all sorts of other things. But the actual act of sucking a thumb is self-soothing. Some people sway. Have you ever seen an overly tired mom rocking her purse in a grocery store? <laughs> Have you ever been the mom rocking her purse in a grocery store? <laughs> because you're so overly tired that you're self-soothing. Um, people self-soothe in a lot of ways. Thumb sucking is a way to take that willpower, and this is why um, kids will do it when they're tired, because they're actually soothing themselves into falling asleep. Um, if you have a straight thumb, sorry, I forgot to do, and you feel disconnected from a lot of people in your present, that's when you'll start to, to mess with your thumbs. Um, 
you could take your family history or leave it. It, it it'll come or go for you. Um, so when you have thumbs straight up and down, um, it's not necessarily that you need to know where you came from. If you do, it's a bonus. If you don't, it doesn't really affect you either way. Um, but as far as um, the actual motion of sucking on your thumb, it is just a self-soothing mechanism. And you can recognize that when a child, um, an adolescent is sucking their thumb, they need comfort. Find out why. Don't shame them for sucking their thumb. Find out why they need comfort. Um, it, for me, it is an opportunity to have a conversation. Now, does that mean as a mom who's paid for braces on multiple kids and she sees another one sucking their thumb that that's not going to trigger her? It will. However, recognize that it's something that your child needs a conversation because um, they, they just need some soothing. Do they need a hug? Um, and that's, that's your thumb. That was a lot in just the thumb. Do you see why I needed a whole nother 30 minutes to talk about this? Okay, your pointer finger. Um, this is your desire to lead. Um, whether or not you see yourself as an authority and self-esteem. So <laughs> when people chew on their pointer fingers, they are literally chewing themselves apart. Um, they are, and a lot of times it will be triggered by the conversation. Um, someone that I love very dearly, I can always tell when uh, they do not like how the conversation is going. And it's usually because they're getting asked personal questions about, oh, how are your grades? Or how are you doing with this person? Or how's this going? Good. Oh, good. And they're not just only chewing the nail. They're actually chewing the skin around the cuticle. So let's talk about that. Your nail is about protection. But the cuticle, which is the skin around, that's what actually feeds and keeps the protective part healthy. So it has a lot to do with support. So chewing your nail is about protection, but chewing the cuticle around it, you are feeling unsupported, you're feeling unnurtured, or other side of the coin, you're feeling um, almost oppressed by the people who are willing to help you. AKA they want to help you, but they only want to help you in, in their way and they're not actually listening to you. So when people feel unheard um, and it's affecting the way they feel about themselves, see no one listens to me, um, they'll have voice issues and they'll chew on this finger. Okay. Um, your ring finger, or your point, your middle finger, your birdie. I won't flip you off. Your birdie. This one will make total sense. It's about responsibility. When people don't want to take responsibility for something, they pawn it off onto someone else, okay? We also, in our middle finger, um, this is where we take goals. Um, so when you are uh, trying to strive higher, um, this will show up in your middle finger. So in, a, in just a minute, when we get to lengths and shapes, um, that will make more sense when we talk about the middle finger being goals. Okay, your... Uh, ring finger is relationships. So you, this could be your relationship <clears throat> with other people. This could also be your relationship with yourself. So um, if you are married and you're playing with your ring a lot, it's not necessarily that your marriage relationship is having a problem, but that's an indicator for people when they play with that ring finger a lot. Their relationships need adjusting. That's why they're always adjusting their ring. Now, when I am talking about body language, if it's cold outside and you have, my, my ring spins, so these two are not soldered together. So when I get cold, this diamond goes like that. So if I'm talking to you and my ring, my diamond is poking me in the hand and I adjust my ring, that doesn't mean that my relationships need a problem. It means my ring was stabbing me. Okay, the action fits. If my ring, if the diamond is right where it's supposed to be, and you start asking me about my kids or my husband or my parents or my in-laws, and all of a sudden I take that and I start adjusting it, oh, we're good, things are great. Don't believe me, ask me more questions, okay? Um, what if there is no ring 
and you'll see people and they'll take and they'll adjust that finger even though there's nothing on it. Okay, same thing. Ask them a little bit more if you want, you know, ask them a little bit more about their relationships because there's something there. Um, pinkies. Pinkies are your, your mind, your imagination, and your health. Guess what finger people with mental health issues tend to damage or pick at the most? Their pinkies. So your pinky is health, but it is also imagination. So those two together, when your mental health is struggling, people will blank it. They'll take that pinky and they'll blanket it and they'll comfort it. Um, my, my young kids before they were verbal, um, if I would, if I saw one of them sucking on that finger or holding that finger, I would take their temperature because I knew something about their health was off. Um, when I see people who have, I actually know quite a few people that the top knuckle of their pinky there, that it goes in. So their finger looks like that. Um, cause the tendon is short right here. These people tend to think outside the box. And that's why the top of their finger is crooked because they don't think along the straight and narrow. They think this way and that's not good or bad. It just is. Um, and so just as a review, willpower and ancestry, self esteem and authority, whether or not you want to lead responsibility and goals, relationships. This could be your relationship with yourself or other people and then your health and your, um, the way that your imagination. Okay. So how this all matters and I'll get to the webbing in between in just a second. So if you take your hand and you just hold it up, if I were to just throw my fingers up, do you see how my pinky naturally stands out on its own and that there's a natural gapping right here. So everybody take your hand and flip it and then just flip it up and see where it goes. Okay. I could do this 30 times and my pinky will still go out on its own because I tend to be a very independent thinker. And so this space right here in between the pinky um, and the ring finger, that is my level of independence. So people that are very independent, they like to do things on their own introverts. When they shake their hand and fling <laughs> that pinky will always be separate. Okay, so what if it's really close, which is actually, I have to actually put effort into bringing my pinky in. These people tend to be more extroverted. They tend to want um, closer connections. They tend to be interdependent and on a toxic scale, they tend to have codependency. Um, and here's the thing. It can be different for each hand. I am far more independent when it comes to, that's a weird anger, so you can't really tell. I'm far more independent in masculine energy, but even in feminine, where it's all about connection and nurturing, my pinky still stand out. And you'll have other people that they'll have one that's in and one that's out. They'll both be in. Um, so just kind of shake and then fling and see <laughs> where things go. Um, an easier way of doing this, take your hand and then slap it on a piece of paper and then trace it. Okay. So in between here, this is level of independence in between your ring finger and your responsibility. Um, that is your artistic ability and also how you are doing with order. So one end of the spectrum would be artistry and um, very creative. The other end, if you tend, so if it tends to be far apart, very artistic, um, very right brain, think outside the box, and very creative, hold those closer together. They tend to be all about order, organization. Um, they want things in a line. They really like symmetry. So the funny thing about that is those of you that know me, <laughs> very independent, but those fingers tend to stay close together. I'm creative, I'm good at problem solving, but I really like order. Chaos and I are not friends. I have equal gaps between all fingers on both hands. Okay. So all that, there isn't one. So it's you. And this is where I love this because now you have choice. There are situations where you're like, ah, just leave me alone. And then there are other situations where you're like, I would love to work as a team where me, I actually have to be, um, 
convinced that to, to be on a team. Okay, where these people have to be convinced to work alone. You, you could go either way. You're good. Um, here, when you need to problem solve and use logic, you can. When you need to do problem solving and really think outside the box, you can. These people tend to problem solve through really extreme. I love, I love having people like this um, problem solve with me because they come out of, they usually have a solution, but it's like, what? How did you even think of that? <laughs> Where these people are like, well, this is how we've always done it. So let's figure out how to make that work. Okay. Are these examples making sense? Okay. Um, in between your responsibility and your self-esteem. So this right here is leadership and, um, so when you space, if that finger tends to stand out on its own, you are a natural leader. Whether you want to be or not, people ask you for advice, people look to you, for example, and you're like, why does everyone expect me to know these things? Um, and yet it's always happened. And you probably have fairly high cheekbones as well. Um, but this space right here is for leadership and um, being driven. So the farther apart you hold these, the more driven you are, the more um, ambitious you are. Where this together, your ambition tends to be only what you're responsible for. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it well. Where out here, you're, you're just going to do it because you want to do it. Um, and then this is about connection. So think about when we used to shake hands. Um, whether or not that met when you shook hands is an indicator about whether or not that person valued the relationship. And so there's so much about shaking hands that I miss, but that's just because I read body language. So it is also your willingness to obey. So um, the closer, the smaller that gap is, the more likely you are to fall in line. The wider you spread your hand, the more likely you are to be what I call a rebel energy. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to try and go out and do bad things, but you're going to question. You're going to be the why kid. You're going to be the prove it to me kid. You're going to always want to know why you have to do it that way. Okay. Now, someone was asking about curves. Beautiful question. Um, okay. So my hand, these fingers, if I just hold my, if I put all my fingers together and I hold them. Okay. First off, do you see how in, how that finger won't curve over? <laughs> So when I say I'm very independent, I'm not just, I really am. Like it takes great effort for me to push that finger over. These other three, however, my responsibility and my goals stand up straight and tall. I'll mind, but I don't want to. <laughs> so this finger stands up straight and tall because for me, my responsibilities are the things, my goals and my responsibilities are the things I give the most attention to. Now, I have actually had people say, well, everyone's middle finger is the tallest. There are some people that they're level with these other three. So they do not put their responsibilities or their tasks above relationships or themselves. I tend to put my tasks above myself and above my relationships. I'm a very task oriented person. So the higher that finger stands above the other two is the priority in which you give it. Okay, so then my next, my next tallest finger is my self-esteem. It's my um, ability to stand tall. Okay, then my relationships. And way down here is my health. Okay, that's where I have to put my most effort because that's the thing that comes the least natural to me. Um, which is actually why I know everything I know. To me, it's such a blessing that I've had to gather so much information about health and bodies. Um, so I don't mind that I have this little short stubby pinky because it's given me the ability to research and learn. It didn't come naturally to me. But standing up and being heard does come natural to me. I'm not afraid to stand tall and take responsibility for things. Um, so when whichever finger is the tallest, that's where you put the majority of your effort. So mine is my tasks, myself, and then my relationships. You have to stop looking at things as good or bad or right or wrong. See, my pointer finger, especially on my right hand, doesn't curve, but kind of twists towards my middle finger is this 
Uh, is there a meaning for that? Yes. So when your other fingers twist towards others, they are dependent on that other finger. So let's see, she said her pointed finger on my right hand doesn't curve, but twist towards my middle. Okay, so your, your tasks have now overpowered how you feel about yourself. And so your self-esteem is now dependent on, which is why it twists towards it, um, the things that you have taken responsibility for. So very task-driven, very, I matter because of what I do, not because of who I am. And worry, you're not alone. You would, there are so many women that this finger turns or bends towards their responsibility finger. Because, and part of that is culture. Um, we as women are taught that our worth is based on what we do for others, um, how loving we are, how nurturing we are. Um, but quite honestly, it's not true. <laughs> it's not. Um, you are a human being, not a human doing. And you could do nothing but be a person of light and love, and you would have value. And that finger would stand straight and tall and towards itself. Okay? So anytime you have a finger that curves towards something else, and this is especially when, when um, women get older and they will say it's because of arthritis that their fingers will start to twist towards their tasks or their relationships. Um, no, it's because everything is turning towards that middle finger because it's all about the goals and the tasks. Um, my goal is to have my fingers either all stand straight or I'll lead towards my relationships. I want those relationships to be something that are very strong and very empowered. Now, because of the bone structure in your hand, um, everybody knows that you can't lift. So if you were to put, if you were to tuck your responsibilities and then try to lift your ring finger, you can't because of the bone structure in your hand. Um, and this is what I tell people because you are not responsible for anyone but yourself. And that's why you're not locked. Are you responsible for whether or not your husband takes care of his health? Nope. Are you responsible for whether or not your children uh, brush their teeth and do their laundry at 25 years old? Nope. So stop trying to lift a burden that you literally can't. Okay, your hand was designed that way for a reason, because if you tucked your responsibilities, the only thing you're responsible to lift is yourself, not your relationships. That's why it can't lift on its own. Okay, I absolutely love anatomy and physiology, because the more I understand about anatomy and physiology, the more it explains truth about our purpose. And your purpose is not to lift everyone else and forget about who you are. Your purpose is to lift you, to love you, to stand as a light, to fill your bucket so that it is so easy to do that for other people. And our hands literally teach us this, that when you take away your responsibilities, you can no longer lift your relationships. It actually hurts to try and lift those, but you can lift yourself freely. And I know I'm triggering. I can hear it. That's so selfish. <laughs> it's not selfish. If you think about it on an airplane, they don't say, make sure everyone around you has your oxygen mask on before you put yours on. They say, put your ox oxygen mask on so you can help other people. And your hands remind you of this. Ladies, it is a beautiful gift that our hands are about connection and creation, that each finger helps us remember that we have the ability to reach out, okay? That's another thing that your fingers allow you to do is reach farther. I know that this sounds so simple, but how many of you have ever thought, oh, if I were to reach out for something <laughs> with just my hand? I don't make it as far, and even once I reach it, I can't hold on to it. Fingers help us hold on to what we want. And so fingers are something that people don't pay a lot of uh, attention to, but they do chew apart. And we chew apart our self-esteem, and we chew apart our goals, and we chew apart our relationships, and we chew apart the thoughts in our head, and 
We chew apart our ability to self-soothe, and then we wonder why we're all so messed up. So, I have, I have a, a project for you this week. Care for your hands. If your hands need lotion, put lotion on them. If you are a nail biter, then go on Amazon or a drugstore and buy that anti thumb sucker nail polish that has quinine in it. So anytime you put it in your mouth, it tastes horrible. And then you won't bite yourself anymore. You'll stop chewing yourself apart. What can you do this week to show more love for your hands? Love your hands, ladies. They're what connect us to other people. They're what help us reach out and grab the things that we love and hold on to the things that we love. When we feel like things are slipping through our fingers, have you ever noticed how many phrases, especially in, in, our, in the English language, how many phrases as I actually tell you what the meanings of your body parts, all of a sudden you're like, hmm, that phrase makes sense. People say things like, I feel like that relationship is just slipping through my fingers. And, and then they'll, they'll play with their ring finger or they'll squeeze tight. The thing with relationships, relationships are like jello. And when you squeeze them too tight, all they do is squish through the cracks. Okay. If you want jello to stay in place, you hold it gently. And relationships are the same way. You hold them gently, you nurture them and your hands and your fingers allow you to do that. But as soon as you squish too tight, everything slips through your fingers. Your hands are beautiful, beautiful gifts. They teach us about whether or not we feel connected to other people, whether or not we are finishing our projects, because when we procrastinate, it's going to show up in our middle finger and it's going to show up in our hands. If we are feeling unprotected, it's going to show up in our knuckles. So these knuckles are protection. These ones are flexibility and support, and these ones are balance. So when we're feeling out of balance, and those of you who have learned from me before, when I talk about your life being in or out of balance, I'm actually talking about whether or not you are in feminine or masculine energy. And I'm talking about your physical, your mental, your social, your emotional, and your spiritual health. Um, for those of you who have not yet downloaded um, the up-level quiz, it gives you an evaluation of those five areas of health, your mental, or excuse me, your physical, your mental, your social, your emotional, and your spiritual. Where are you at with each of those? Because it's affecting your hands and so many other parts of your body. Um, but I got started a little bit late, so I went a little bit over the half hour mark. Um, I hope that this helps you with your hands. I hope that you're able to care for them, to show love for them, to stop chewing on them, and to recognize that with each finger you chew on, your mindset is chewing you apart, and that's why you're chewing yourself apart. Um, you are worth taking care of, and you can start with your hands. Your hands are beautiful things that connect us to other people. And... For those of you that are joining me on Friday for the Mindset Reset class, I am so excited to see you there. And we will actually talk a little bit more about ways to actually help change your mind to overcome those habits, to actually start recognizing, oh my goodness, me chewing on my fingers means my I'm mentally chewing myself apart. I've got to stop this. So I look forward to seeing those of you that are joining me on Friday. If you have not um, downloaded the up-leveling quiz yet. It's free. I just need your email address. I know where to send it. Um, please, please download that, and I will see you next Monday. Have a fabulous day, ladies.